Welcome to the Bio Balance Health Cast, episode number 412, How Dr. Moffitt's Office Treats Thyroid Disease. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So last week, we were talking about why, especially in the Midwest, so many people have problems with their thyroid as they age. And we talked about dental issues and fluorine in the water and bromine and all that stuff. And we talked about the mechanics of how the thyroid operates and the pituitary gland and mm-hmm. TSH and all that stuff. What was frustrating for me in that discussion was not the, the data points that we were covering, but that mainstream medicine doesn't seem to recognize the things that you were saying mm-hmm. and doesn't seem to have an answer that solves the problem. They, the, their approach to it is to take a blood test and measure your TSH. Mm-hmm. And if it's low, they give you something to stimulate your TSH. No, they don't. They give you thyroid. Well, but if it's your TSH, it comes out of your pituitary gland. I know, they get, but they can't make your TSH okay. go up. If it's low, the TSH is low, usually your thyroid's high. Oh, if your okay. TSH is high, then your thyroid's low, and we replace it in basically in either in either con, uh, circumstance, we replace it. All right. We give patients thyroid, but in a different way. And, and is the thyroid that you give them, is it a synthetic? Is it a man-made product, or is it a natural product? Well, we have choices. Okay. And um, back in the 40s, Everybody took pork thyroid, so thyroid from pork, which was called armor thyroid. Because armor, armor meat packing. Yeah, yeah, armor meat packing. So now we they have make all the bacon. Save now all we have the medical pigs that we use for all kinds of medical reasons, and we use that thyroid for our armor th- thyroid. But we also there are several other natural pork thyroids. But if it says pork thyroid, mm-hmm. that has all the thyroid hormones in it: T one, two, three, and four. People are a lot like pigs in their thyroid, so we have the same kind of thyroid um, relationship. Like T3 and T4 have, have the same ratio. So we can take their thyroid orally and actually replace our own, which is different than many hormones. Yeah. So, um, so, so that's so- one. That's natural. And then, and then in the 40s, MDs and DOs had a big fight. DOs stuck with armor thyroid, and MDs went to Synthroid, the new thing. It was synthetic T4. And at that time, they tested it. They tested it only on men because women in cycles and everything else would mess up their study. So they only tested it on men. And so when they developed Synthroid, they said this is a better product Mm -hmm. than armor thyroid. However, in my experience... Generally, men do better on Synthroid. That's who they tested, and it does work for them. And women do better on Armour Thyroid. Here's why. Armour Thyroid has T3 and T4, and that's, that's what women actually need. And, and they can't convert T4, which is the rather inactive thyroid, into the active thyroid, which is T3. Most women aren't very good at that. There's a few women who are better on Synthroid, and we figure that out. But men take their T4 and make a lot of T3. They're just different in that way. So when I give a man Synthroid, in general, I'll get a a normal T4 and a normal T3. But if I give it to a woman, all I'll get is a normal T4, and none of her symptoms are better. And her T3 is low. So she just doesn't feel good. I mean, she has – I've not helped her. So because you have years and years of experience, and you've really studied this – you make a guesstimate when somebody comes mm-hmm. in as to which of those they'll mm-hmm. most likely respond to. Mm-hmm. Then you prescribe that for them, mm-hmm. and you try it for a month, mm-hmm. and do About what? About six you... weeks, and then we retest. Okay. Or, well, there's several ways to monitor your thyroid. One is to get blood tests, the T3, T4, TSH. 
is the basic blood panel that you would look at. So you're looking at the actual hormones and the stimulating hormone, or you check a, a basal temperature in the morning. And since- it's Just like trying to get pregnant. Yeah, just like trying to get pregnant. So, so there are two hormones that increase your temperature, your basal temperature. One is progesterone. So when you're trying to get pregnant, when women are trying to get pregnant, they look for a progesterone jump so when they have ovulated. And that makes their temperature go up of 0 0.2, 0 0.3. But your thyroid is what gives you your basic temperature for your whole body, how your body burns calories, how your body makes energy. That's all determined by your thyroid. So if your thyroid is low, your temperature is going, if you're a female, is going to be less than 98. And if you're a male, it's going to be less than 98.4. Okay. So if your thyroid's low. If your thyroid's high, then your temperature is going to be higher than the average bear, uh, higher than the 98.6. And, and that doesn't mean that you have a fever or that you have inflammation issues. No, it means that you're burning calories really fast and you're making a lot of heat. Yeah. So the thyroid gland is the only reason that we are warm-blooded. It's the only reason we can live in hot and cold climates. It's the only reason that um, we can actually um, burn calories and make heat. So, but typically, if the thyroid gland is out of whack, it's out of whack because it's low in the TSH and the T2, It's usually low in the T3, T4, and the TSH may be high. Okay. As we get older, sometimes the TSH, the, the pituitary is not as good at responding, and so it can be low as well. Yeah. So, but we have to look at, and I, I work up patients by looking at the T3, the T4, and the TSH. And uh, after and, that... And most doctors just do the TSH. They just look at the TSH. And if your TSH is okay, which they look at, at the men's scale, which is much broader and has a much higher normal than women's. Women's TSH should be less than 2.5 if they're not on anything and their thyroid's working. And men should be less than 4.5 if they're not on thyroid and their thyroid's working. So when pa a patient comes to me and gives me the symptoms of low thyroid... I look at their thyroid, basically, and you know, just kind of look to see if they have a goiter because sometimes your thyroid will get really big right in here. Um, sometimes I order an ultrasound just to, to see what's going on in the thyroid, make sure there's no masses that are a problem. And then we discuss replacement thyroid. And, and I decide whether they're going to be on Synthroid or Armour Thyroid or Nature Thyroid. And, and we try it. It's a trial and error thing. Mm -hmm. And then we redraw blood. And sometimes I have them take their basal temperature to see if it comes up. So, so you can see if I'm responding to our Synthroid mm -hmm. by changes in in those chemicals, right? Uh, but if but it won't tell you if it's enough, right? Because then you have to look at well, okay, this is working. You're mm -hmm. responding to this particular one. We don't need to change drugs, mm -hmm. but we need to play with the dosage. Right. The tests aren't perfect. Okay. And uh, one of the biggest problems that my patients have when I send them for lab is they take their thyroid that morning, mm -hmm. right before they go to the lab, and they have a huge peak because all yeah. oral drugs have a huge peak when, you're, when you take them initially, and then they, they drop the rest of the time until your next dose. So they have this huge peak, and it looks like they've got too much thyroid. So I have to tell them, don't take your thyroid before your blood is drawn. Take it right afterwards. Okay. So just, we want to get the, the trough or the lowest part of your thyroid, not the highest, and not the, the one hour, two hour peak. So, so that's, so I look at them, I, I look at, if this were you, I would ask you all your symptoms, go over thyroid disease in your family, uh, if you've ever had hyperthyroidism, because oftentimes you'll have Hashimoto's or uh, Graves' disease, and, and that's high thyroid, and then the thyroid burns out, and then it drops. Wow. So sometimes and that's the precursor. So if your thyroid itself has died, mm -hmm. then you aren't going to make any of those ingredients. Right. So you need to have so complete have to have replacement. Replaced. Yes. Okay. So that's, and that's important. And it's also those patients usually need a little extra thyroid to actually, because some of their receptor sites have been damaged. So in the old days, would, would you know that or think that because somebody had a goiter? Or how would you know that 
the uh, Hashimoto's. Hashimoto's, because they'd have almost the opposite of these of these symptoms. They'd be people are hyper. Their heart rate goes up. Their blood pressure goes up. They can't sleep. They you know they're they're breathing really fast. You know, it's kind of like they're having an anxiety attack and that's right. how they feel, okay. but it's all the time. Yeah. So it's, it's the opposite. They lose weight. Hyperthyroid causes people to, to get really thin. And then when their thyroid dies, then they gain a ton of weight back and it's miserable yeah. because they've been learning to eat a lot to maintain their thin weight. Yeah. So, so those are things I have to know. I also have to know uh, whether you've had surgery on your thyroid or a biopsy or what that said, or if you've ever, you know, ever had nodules removed, something like that. Sometimes people forget that when they're filling out their history for their surgical history. <clears throat> so after we get through all that and we try it, I also put patients on iodine because iodorol is what the type of iodine, because the thyroid itself, even though I'm giving thyroid, the receptor sites need iodine to accept, to accept the thyroid I'm giving them. So I give them iodine to help it connect better to each cell in the body. And sometimes the iodine acts as a flushing agent and flushes out a lot of toxins, and patients feel bad on it for a few days. So we stop it, and then we restart at a lower dose, and it, it's like a cleanse. It gets rid of all these nasty chemicals that have been collecting when you take the iodine. Hmm. So it, it does make you feel better and make you healthier to take the iodine, but it also... But you may feel worse first. You may feel worse first. Yeah. And so that's hard to get across because <laughs> people are used to si side effects that you get a side effect and it'll be the same side effect every time you take a drug right. or, a, or a supplement, but this isn't an allergy or anything. It's just flushing your system of all the bad things. Hmm. So, so that's pretty much how we start out. Then when somebody comes back and I look at their lab, I, usually, I may have looked at their um, antibodies to see if they have um, antibodies that would tell me they used to have Graves' disease or Hashimoto's or they still have it. So I look at that just to make sure, just to know if that's the case so that I have a diagnosis. But then I look at their TSH, and when they come back and they have thyroid on board, I want their TSH to be below one. That's usually what tells me physiologically that I've gotten the right dose. It's right. like when I give estrogen, I want the FSH, the other the stimulating hormone for the ovary, to drop below 23. That tells me I've made I've given enough. And many times the FSH drops to nothing. Mm -hmm. So when I look at the same thyroid test, I have to know if somebody's on thyroid or not on thyroid, if they've had uh, Hashimoto's or Graves' disease. Or surgery to be, on Or surgery on their thyroid. I have to have this information to even interpret it. Or if they're, they're on nothing, then I have to be able to know that too. So the same test that we use is requires the physician's interpretation based on the history of the patient. You can't just look at a lab and say, yeah, you have high thyroid, you have right. high thyroid, low thyroid, you're, you're on too much, you're on too little. You have to know the history. So that's where oftentimes doctors aren't trained to see the TSH fall. They get all freaked out because the TSH is low. But the T3 and T4, the active working hormones, are fine. So... TSH only stimulates your thyroid. That's really all well, it does. And when they were Who in med cares? medical school 10, 15, 20 years 30. ago or, or more, they were taught, look at the TSH. Right. That's all that. And but, so that's what they remember, and that's what they look mm -hmm. at. Right. If they've been more recently to medical school. But you school, read journal articles all the time. About, <coughs> but, but really, the mainstream medicine hasn't come through to critically look at how we're looking at hormones. They just give you, this is the test, this is the normal, this is the abnormal. We should have a test for people who are on thyroid, people who are off thyroid, people who, you know, who were monitoring on, on thyroid medication. But you also have to give the instructions. Right. You, you have to tell people, I, I mean, certainly I never knew this before, mm -hmm. that you need to take the thyroid drug mm -hmm. the first thing in the morning mm -hmm. and wait 20 minutes before you take my, anything my else. My scripts all have it, have it written on them. But I tell them. And and so if it's written on the script, the pharmacy puts that information mm -hmm. on the label of the mm -hmm. pill bottle. But I tell the patient that they have to do that. Right. And that next time when we draw blood, don't take your pill right beforehand. Just wait till after. 
because then we'll get a false reading. It's just, it's not a good way to manage it. But we, we do a lot of supplements that help the thyroid. Selenium helps the thyroid. A lot of really small minerals that we don't get a lot of. Um, magnesium, I, I really love to give magnesium glycinate with thyroid because that keeps people who have a kind of a, a tricky heart that may beat a little faster with thyroid, it calms that down. So when I see somebody who's on thyroid and they say my heart rate went up a lot, then I put them on magnesium because really that is just that their heart's more sensitive because it doesn't have enough magnesium. Mm -hmm. So I give them 400 milligrams day and twice a day, and then the heart rate comes down. So in general, that's how I manage that, not just dropping the dose or stopping the pills. So there's a lot of troubleshooting that you have to know right. when you're giving thyroid. But I find that in our practice with testosterone and estrogen, if I don't treat the thyroid, no one is going to feel completely better. They're going to feel a little better. Mm -hmm. But I'm not happy with that. I mean, I'm, I wouldn't be happy to go to a doctor and be a little better. I could see just a little better. My, you know... When when do we when did we decide that was okay? Yeah, that we could just feel just you know five percent better, and that was success. So I, I that's why I treat thyroid, and I have thyroid uh, disease, so I know how it's been poorly treated, and I right. know how to treat it the right way, yeah. and how I feel better when my dose is correct. I don't I don't feel hyper, and I don't feel. I mean, I'm always hyper, but I mean, I don't feel over hyper and I don't, and I don't feel sluggish and tired and, and my hair doesn't fall out. I mean, if I, if I don't take it for a few days, my hair starts falling out. I know. My, my wife, in all the years that we were married, would complain about being cold all the time. Mm -hmm. And that was just a normal condition for her. And she always wore a sweater. And it was. She did. It, I know. And it was a constant conversational item mm -hmm. in our family because mm -hmm. I would not be cold. Mm -hmm. I would be really hot. Mm -hmm. And she was freezing. And we to try to find a balance point where yeah. we could both be comfortable was difficult. And she went for regular checkups every year. She saw her physician, her regular physician. She mm -hmm. saw her gynecologist. She, and nobody ever suggested that there was a problem with her thyroid. You have to ask the questions. You have to ask enough of the questions, enough well, of these symptoms. You say that, but when you met her, mm -hmm. <laughs> you observed... To me, yes. that you thought she might ought to get her thyroid tested mm -hmm. because you listened to her. You mm -hmm. saw that she was cold. You looked at her eyebrows. Mm -hmm. The symptoms that normally you check, mm -hmm. you were checking, even though she wasn't your patient at mm -hmm. that time. And you said, if I were you, I would suggest she get this checked mm -hmm. out. Yeah, and she has low thyroid. And she has low thyroid. But that's, that's, the, um, that's the talent doctors are supposed to, to develop. To develop. Yeah. We're supposed to develop. Being able to look at somebody and note everything that's going on. Thin hair, the receding here, you know, uh, acne or... Um, so if anybody ever gives you a weird look in the mall, it could just be a doctor practicing <laughs> Staring <everything>. at you. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, we have to ratchet that back when we go out in public. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, but it, it really is kind of a talent that you should... If you're a physician, develop. Right. You look at nails. You look at, you know, you look at sunspots. You, you know, there's a lot yeah. of things that we look at. One time I was sitting next to somebody at a meeting, and she had, she was swollen. So her ring was like here, and then she, her fingers were all yeah. like sausages on either side. And, and I looked at her skin, and she, it looked like tiles. You know, like, like literal tiles, like on, like we yeah. have on our front steps, basically. Uh -huh. And... <clears throat> I looked at her and I, I, she had a goiter and she had, you know, she had no eyebrows out here. And I kind of went over everything. And I said, I just said, you know, casually, have you ever had your thyroid checked? <laughs> because she looked miserable, but, oh yeah, well, I'm on thyroid medicine, but she wasn't on enough yeah, or none of that stuff would have been there. Right. So I didn't want to invade her privacy. So right. I just said, oh, good. I mean... She didn't ask me my opinion. I just right. and you weren't her and, doctor, and I'm not her doctor. Yeah. So, so but you see that stuff, and you want to do something. Yeah. And so that's this is my version of doing something. Yes, it so is. So if you have these symptoms, and you either are not being treated with enough thyroid, or you haven't been treated for your thyroid, then you can use these symptoms and the knowledge that that we gave you about. 
thyroid tests and ask for a TSH T3, free T3, free T4, meaning that's the active part of that hormone, and uh, and get those tests. Even take your temperature before you get out of bed. If it's if you're a woman, it's below ninety eight, then you may have low thyroid. Yeah. So. So hopefully this will be useful information yes. for you. And as always, thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.